Hello everyone! Welcome back to our math room. In this video, we are going to have a fundamental lesson in basic calculus and the topic is all about the limit of a function. Here are the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to define limit of a function, understand the existence of a limit, and distinguish limit of a function and f of c. Let us first define limit. Limit is said to be the backbone of calculus. It is essential to the understanding of various concepts in calculus. It is necessary in studying change in great detail since calculus is defined as the mathematics of change. Derivatives and integrals are the two main focus of calculus, which were formulated using the concepts of limits as you can see in their mathematical definitions. We have this for derivatives and this one for integrals. So what is the meaning of finding the limit? The limit of a function describes how a function behaves as the independent variable x gets closer to a certain number or is called a constant. Keep in mind that the variable can only take values very close to the constant, but it cannot be equal to the constant itself. The limit will describe what is happening to the function near the constant. Let us now define limit mathematically. Consider a function f of a single variable x. Consider a constant c which the variable x will approach, and c may or may not be in the domain of f. The limit to be denoted by l is the unique real value that f of x will approach as x approaches c. In symbols, we write this process as which is being read as the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l. Consider this given problem, the limit of x plus 4 as x approaches 0. The question here is, what value will the function approach to as the independent variable x approaches 0? If we have a number 9, there are two ways to approach 0. It can be through values on its left and through values on its right. Let us first consider approaching 0 from its left or through values less than 0. The limit that we get from left going to 0 is what we call the left-hand limit. And it is represented by the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left using the symbol negative. And from the right going to 0, it is called the right-hand limit. So we have this symbol, the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right using the symbol plus sign. For the limit of the function exists, the left-hand limit must have the same value with the right-hand limit. In other words, for a limit L to exist, the limits from the left and from the right must both exist and be equal to the value of L. Let's talk about the existence of a limit. The question is, does limit always exist? The limit of a function f as x approaches c exists if and only if the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit for some real number l. But if the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit, then the limit does not exist. Or, if one of these does not exist, automatically the limit does not exist as well. How do we find the limit? Here are the following ways. First, we can do the numerical method, or numerically, second, graphically, and third, algebraically. In the next videos, we are going to discuss each of these methods. This time, let us talk about the difference of the limit of a function as x approaches c and f of c. When we say limit of the function, it refers to the value of the function approaches as x approaches c. When we say f of c, it refers to the value of the function at x equals c. In limits, it is very important to understand that these two may have the same or different values. Sometimes, both of them exist or both of them do not exist or only one of them exists. 
It must be clear that the inclusion of a value from the domain of a function does not prohibit the evaluation of the limit of that function at that excluded value, provided of course that f is defined at the points near the value of c. What are the important things that you need to take note? First, a limit may or may not exist. Sometimes, a limit does not exist because the values of the function do not approach some unique number from both the left and the right of an x value. Third, a limit may exist even at a point where the function is not defined or there is a hole on it, since limits indicate behavior of the function near some x values and not at the x value itself. Here is the end of the introduction to limits. I hope you have understood our discussion about its definition, its existence, and the difference of limit and f of c. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on my YouTube channel, Math Room by Teacher John. Bye everyone! See you on our next video.